The baptism of Christ demonstrates the oneness of God. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 states, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending. Notice, he saw, John the Baptist, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and resting on him, on Christ. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Isaiah 42.1 in the NASB says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. End quote. According to the prophet Isaiah, God the Father put his own spirit upon the Messiah. God said, I have put my spirit upon him. Here we see, that only one true God the Father spoke from heaven, while His own omnipresent Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon the man Christ Jesus. Thus we only see one divine person speaking and descending from heaven upon the human man Christ Jesus. For God's divine person, it says, My soul, in Isaiah 42.1, My soul as one divine person, also became one human person via incarnation through the Virgin. For Hebrews 1.3 says that the Son is the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. The context proves that the Father's divine person became a human person in the incarnation through the Virgin. Nothing in the text shows three co-equally distinct God persons at Christ's baptism as we see only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We don't see three divine persons. We see one divine person, our Heavenly Father, whose spirit descended in the form of a dove, like a dove, upon the Christ at his baptism, upon the man Christ Jesus. So we have only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2, 5. It doesn't say there's one God has three divine persons and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It says there's only one God as one divine individual who also became a man, the man Christ Jesus. For one divine person called the Father also became a true man as the Son within the Virgin. Trinitarian scholars allege that a heavenly God, the Son person, was both in heaven and on earth at the selfsame time. Wherefore, just as an alleged omnipresent heavenly God, the Son person, would be able to speak in heaven while simultaneously existing on the earth as a man, so our heavenly Father could speak in heaven and on earth simultaneously while being incarnated as a human person at the same time. If Trinitarian theologians can think of an alleged omnipresent heavenly Son speaking and acting in heaven, while he was also on the earth as a man, then it is not impossible to believe that the Father could speak in heaven while speaking and acting independently on the earth as a man via his human incarnation as Christ. With man this is impossible, but not with the almighty and omnipresent God, because God is infinite. He can speak and act in many places at once. Whereas a human finite creature or an angelic creation can only be in one place at one time. This, therefore, explains the omnipresence of God in the incarnation. God, the omnipresent Heavenly Father, could act and speak in heaven while His own arm was revealed. Jesus is called the arm of Yahweh Himself revealed, Isaiah 53.1. So Jesus is the extension of of the Almighty God, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, who became the child born and son given in a new manifestation, as God manifests in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, because God's Holy Spirit descended upon the Virgin to become the man Christ Jesus. For more videos like this one, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us on the web at apostolicchristianfaith.com. Lord bless.